Yeah. January the 22nd, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh died. He'd had a stroke many years ago, and uh, that really took its toll, and eventually it killed him. But he was 95, a highly respected and revered spiritual teacher who was exiled from Vietnam, apparently, in the 1960s because he opposed the war. But that was his whole thing, non-violence. And he was the founder, the proponent, the guy who came up with engaged Buddhism, which basically means that, okay, we know about meditation. Okay, we know about mindfulness. Yeah, 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 we've got all the principles. Now let's apply it to the real world, to social justice, to politics, to war, all these things that really matter. And that made him both influential, but also dangerous to those who like war and want more war. And uh, his ideas and words impacted millions and millions of people worldwide. And they were very sad when he died. But he was 95, and that's a really good age. In fact, he wasn't the least bit scared of dying. He wrote, birth and death are only notions. They are not real. The Buddha taught that there is no birth, there is no death, there is no coming, there is no going, there is no same, there is no different, there is no permanent self, there is no annihilation, we only think there is. Which of course made me incredibly curious about what his crossing was like. And when I went into the metaphorical cave again, there was nobody there. Usually they show up, they walk in, they fall down, their consciousness appears somehow. But not in the case of Thich Nhat Hanh. There was nobody there. I didn't quite know what to do. That's the first time that's ever happened. But then I noticed, as I looked around this metaphorical cave, that there was graffiti on the wall. But not graffiti. It's more like stains, actually. And I went over and looked at one of these stains. And it was him. I'm not quite sure how it was him, but it was him. It was his consciousness on the wall. And although I can't talk to these things, I mean, there's no conversation as such, I do get an impression of what the conversation would be if I were having it. And as I drew close to one of these stains, I got a very strong sense that he was saying something like, I was life, and now I am death. It's just a process. Which is really interesting, because I think that really reflected how he felt in life, that it was just a continuum. In fact, he said when he was alive, I am a continuation, like the rain is a continuation of a cloud. That's exactly what this was. And so I moved around and these stains were everywhere. He was this place. He wasn't in this place. He was this place. And I strolled alone up the symbolic tunnel I always see, and there were more stains on the wall. Even in the chamber that I see with the dome in it, the dome of light, stains on the wall. But as I watched, the stains moved down the wall and climbed into the light, merged with the light, stood at the center of the light. He was one with the universe, but he already knew that. He lived that way, as if he was one with the universe. There was nothing to strip away from him. He was actually the embodiment of universal energy while he was living. And gradually, that figure made of stains vanished into infinity. And out of curiosity, I wandered down the symbolic tunnel, I looked around, and all the stains were gone. The walls were clean. 
There was nothing there. So he was the real deal, this guy. He really walked the talk. He lived his belief system. And his belief system seemed to be as close to the truth of how things are as it could possibly be. 